Good afternoon all. Should we get some post open? Yes, it's post bag! Right, let's get this one open. I think my other knife knives are out in the shed. There's a lot going on in the garden at the moment because the weather is, well, really quite spectacular for this time of year. Okay, this one is a box and it's got a transparent front and I think you can probably guess where this is going. Now, I particularly wanted the one with flanges so that I can mount it on the fence. Let's get this thing out. Oops. Uh, yes, good. So there's a, a sort of sealing bead in there, although I probably, well, actually, I won't be able to seal this because I'm going to have four wires coming up into the box, maybe there or something. And I might actually angle it slightly so that water would tend to run out of that hole. Uh, where's my screwdriver? I've got a feeling that's in the shed as well. I'll use this one for now just to get the uh, screws out. The other two screws are inside, so I might as well put all screws inside. Yes, yeah, so let's have a look at uh, where this is going. And also I'll take a look at the other box. Now that was a much bigger box, which I put the super capacitor bank in for my front door light. Uh, see how that's fared. It's probably been out there about a month now. Yes, so this is where it's going to go on the fence and it's going to have a charge controller inside it. This one's still working despite obvious moisture ingress at the top, but that hasn't affected the uh, microcontroller circuit, so that's fine. But it would make more sense to have this in a box like this. Uh, so that should just about fit. Certainly the Femto version, the surface mount version, which is much smaller than that, will fit easily in there. The solar input, yellow and black, won't come in from the top. It'll be wrapped around and all four wires will come up through a hole in the bottom. And then the lid, oh, which is hanging off, I think, will um, be screwed on and that will provide a seal. But of course, I'm not going to have a seal in there because you can't seal anything against the British weather. You just can't. So you've got to accept that moisture will get in. So why not have a hole in the bottom corner? Tip this over at an angle. Oh, there go all the screws. That's going to be fun finding that lot. And um, just allow any water that gets in to drain out. And uh, yeah, I did find the four screws and the rubber seal. And it's all here. Now let's go and have a look at the other box around the front. So here's um, a fair bit bigger box and the difference with this one is that um, it's on this fence panel but it's on the north side so it doesn't get direct sun. Now the screws have rusted a bit probably because um, water droplets drop in there and then just sit there but inside I hope you can see that there really isn't any moisture in there at all. I'll see if I can get some focus action. Yes, here we go. So the board looks in really good condition, even down the bottom. And those drill holes, so if any moisture gets in, then it will drain out. So that all looks absolutely fine in there. And as I say, that's been there for well, at least a month. I can't actually remember how long. But like I say, the difference is this doesn't get direct sun. The other box will. Is that going to make any difference? Uh, just for context, here's the uh, box. There's nothing under that wooden uh, block anymore. That was a primitive uh, rain shield, but it didn't really work. Uh, you saw the state of the old supercapacitor bank. Yeah, but for con context, here's that panel on the north side of the fence. There's the sun. There's the shadow of that plant. So this item was purchased on eBay. Uh, it's a waterproof plastic cover clear electronic project box. Those are the dimensions. $4.29, free shipping. Now, when did I buy this? I might have a look at that in a second. Uh, came from 360 Cool. So this is the item I purchased and it was bought on March the 18th. It's now uh, May the 6th, but it's probably been in a week or so. So I reckon that's what, about six weeks it took for that one to turn up. That's fairly typical for uh, the moment at the moment. 
Right, this one is the next one. Make sure I don't, that's quite sharp, that <laughs> nice. Make sure I don't chop into anything. And this is a little module. Let's see if I can get that one out. And this is a, oh, that's uh, playing with the exposure. This is a MOSFET module, which had some quite nice terminal block connectors, which I like the look of. There's also an opto isolator on there. Let's get in a little bit closer on that. So um, I'm guessing that this is the input that drives the opto isolator. That then provides some sort of um, gate voltage for the MOSFET, assuming that is a MOSFET. I presume it is, although I can't see at the moment what model that is. And then of course that um, allows a high current to flow somehow through these connections. So this is for my shared fan. Um, if you have been watching my shared fan videos, then you'll know that at the moment I've got a relay. And a relay is nice and easy because you can put it at any point in the circuit. You can put it either way around. You don't need to worry about polarities. If you're using a MOSFET, things become a bit more complicated. So I've just been trying to trace uh, the tracks on here. It's just on blocks rather than tracks. I suppose it is high current. Uh, so MOSFET drain, which is the tab, goes to these vias. Well, that's linked to positive of, now I assume this is battery in or supply in, and this is load out. So positive of the load goes to drain. That's going to pull it down to uh, ground. Now that's interesting because normally on an N-channel MOSFET, I wonder if this is P-channel. Well, anyway, if it's N-channel, you're pulling the negative end of the load down to the negative side of the battery. So there's um, source that goes through that set of vias to uh, there. Yeah, what they're calling positive of the supply. Yeah, this is all a bit strange. And is that a P-channel MOSFET? I think we need to take a look at the listing. So this is a three volt, five volt, low control, high voltage, up to 36 volts, they're saying, E-switch, electronic switch MOSFET module for Arduino. Uh, really cheap, actually, $1.74. Oh, wait a minute, there's $3 shipping. Hmm, did I pay that? I can't remember. And this came from Module Fans. Let's take a look at the one I purchased. So this is the one I bought, uh, same price, $1.74. So I bought it on March the 22nd. Now this has been in it, for at least a week. It might even be two weeks. So this one came reasonably quickly, um, but there's really no description on this. Uh, it doesn't say whether it's N-channel, P-channel. So I'm gonna have to I, try and identify the MOSFET and uh, work out what it is. So I was just doing a little sketch of my 12 volt battery and the fan. Now the relay module that I currently have, of course, I can place either in the positive side or the negative side. Now, if this MOSFET is an N-channel MOSFET, you need to raise the gate uh, by a certain voltage with respect to the source. Uh, now that's going to be an Arduino type voltage, isn't it? It says it can be um, three volts or five volts, so maybe it's a, a low gate voltage MOSFET. But that would mean that the source of the MOSFET needs to be anchored to the negative of the battery and then you raise the gate with respect to the source which means you'd have to put your MOSFET in this part here you wouldn't be able to control it on the high side if this is a p-channel MOSFET I shall have to have more thoughts about it because I can't quite matter yes I think you pull the gate down below the voltage of the source don't you to turn on a p-channel MOSFET oh I'd have to think about that so is that visible? I think it says F5305S. So let's look that one up. So that appears to be the IRF5305S slash L. Does that mean, oh, low profile through hole, possibly the L. But it is a P-channel MOSFET, which uh, I've not played with before, so that'll be fun. So does that mean I can put it on the high side? But then, yes, I, actually, I think that's probably where it would have to go. 
and then you pull the gate low with respect to the source. Uh, yes. Now the current wouldn't normally flow through that diode, would it? So it doesn't flow drain to source on this one. It must flow source to drain, which is interesting. So source must be the source of the current. Drain would be where the motor is. So source will be on battery positive, and yes, you pull the gate low towards battery negative. That should work, shouldn't it? So it must be like this. Let's put the module there where you can see it. Uh, normally current wouldn't f flow through the body diode, so it must be pointing that way. When you close the channel, or make the channel conduct current, then it will flow from source to drain and power the fan. Gate needs to be uh, made negative with respect to source. So I guess the opto isolator, which has a transistor in it, doesn't it? Uh, so it's going to look something like that. Uh, no, that's there's light shining on there. Must pull the source down to here, down to battery negative. That must be how this is meant to be used. I've never worked with P-channel MOSFETs, but I did notice on the data sheet it says six milliohms that's quite an impressively low on resistance technology moves on so here in the shed that's the relay module now i don't know whether that's in the positive or the negative i can't remember but this mosfet module will have to be in the positive on the high side um, that's still being powered by this um, power tool battery with usb adapter thingy Here's my remote control. Let's just see if it's still working. Oh yes, that's still working. So the advantage of having the MOSFET module rather than the relay is that I'll be able to use the Arduino to pulse width modulate this, which means that I can have speed control. And that means that I can get the Arduino to put different um, pulse widths into this module and then get different pitches of motor frequency which means I can have a sort of form of very strange music it'll be very low beat rate music possibly just a few changes of frequency per minute but music nonetheless so I can start to compete with next door you've heard their music haven't you oh have you not well here it is And uh, finally, let's open these two. <laughs> both of these are labels on both sides. Irritating. Uh, this says terminal blocks. The other one says terminals wiring, I think. Let's get all this out. And these are these. Uh, five pieces of a four-way terminal block. Now, I have used these before, um, although I'm not sure whether they were four-way. Um, for the wiring in my work zone, which is now a tea room. And the, these are four-way and you get a positive and a negative commoning strip. And they're just really handy to make for neat wiring. So these I wanted for the wiring in the shed. I also bought these two, which are six-way. Again, they have the uh, translucent plastic cover and the commoning strip oh two black oh and two red oh that's interesting there's only one black and one red in these oh no sorry that's because there are two of these ignore me uh so yeah some six-way ones some four-way ones i'm not quite sure what i'm gonna need yet but let's get all these out of their packages so here they all are uh the six-way terminal blocks the four-way terminal blocks I've got a funny feeling that the ones in the work zone are five ways. Should we go and have a look? Another excuse to go outside into the warm sunshine. And uh, yes, these are five ways with five way commoning strips. And I've got a couple over there where I put the uh, fuse in. And this, of course, was for the diesel heater which probably will never see the 
light of day, well, it'll never get fired up again. I don't think so anyway. Yes, I thought I had some of those five row ones left, but I can't find them. So I had to buy some more. Let's see what, where they came from on eBay. So the two pieces, 600 volt, 15 amp, 6P, six positions, dual row barrier terminal block. Uh, those two were $7.50. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Although that's free shipping from 22 New Century. And I've got a feeling that name sounds familiar. I think I bought um, the five-way ones from that same seller. But the four-way ones are these five pieces, 600 volt, four position uh, screw terminals. Now this says $11.68, but I didn't pay that. I didn't pay anything like that. Uh, free shipping from OU 2010. Let's take a look at the item I purchased. Yes, so this is five pieces um, for just $4.45. So this seller has massively put the price out. That's obviously why I bought them from this seller because they were crazy cheap. Big price hike on that one. And so these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB. I'm working on uh, some new projects, uh, PCB based projects. Also, a big thanks to my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, you can click this link here. And here are another couple of videos if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, you can click this link here to subscribe. Cheerio.